interesting. Appreciate everybody coming. This is great to see such a great turnout for this event. A lot of familiar faces and uh, appreciate uh, Mayor trusting me to MC this event. You get this job if you've emceed some of the Miss Spanish Fork pageants. Thank you. Yeah, it's really prepped me for this. We want to recognize some of the following people. Uh, first of all, our volunteer firefighters and EMS staff. Chief Jarvis, Deputy, Deputy Chief Baum, uh, and uh, Kenny Pruitt. Our fire station committee, Clyde Johnson, Lynn Jones, Seth Perrins, Keith Broadhead, Jared Johnson, Bailey Ander, Steve Adams, Ryan Baum, and myself, Brandon Gordon. Blaylock and Partners, our architects, Kevin Blaylock, Brian Bach, and Sean Barron. Westland Construction, Nick Sly, Jessica Dahl, Nolan Kerr, Trent Huntsman, and Chris Houghton. Our mayor and city council that are here, as well as Chief Steve Adams, our public safety director. Before I turn the time over to our next, uh, our first speaker, I, I wanted to mention that I was lucky enough um, almost eight years ago to be part of the hiring of Chief Steve Adams. And going through that process, I wondered what Steve would do to uh, earn the trust of the public safety individuals and, and those people that he would be serving with, and instantly watched a, a transformation take take place in our public safety. We've added 10, 10 full-time police officers. Uh, we do the public night safety, public uh, safety night out at the park. People come and enjoy that. We have, uh, we've taken our victim's advocate from part-time to full-time. We've added two canines. Um, he's just one of my heroes. This guy's like that guy that gets all of the merit badges at the scout banquet. Um, of course, he was helped transition from uh, Don Thomas to Ryan Ryan Baum, and uh, and just watching that all take place. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, in June of 2012. So I'm pretty fresh on the council at this time. Richard Davis, Councilman Richard Davis, he calls me on the phone and he says, "Meet me down at the fire station." And I said, "Why?" He goes, "Meet me down at the fire station." If you know Richard, that's exactly how it went. So I met him down at the fire station, and he had bought he had bought pizza for all the firefighters on their regular night. And and uh, and I said, "What what are we doing?" And he says, "These guys had just responded to a fire not very far from here on Canyon Road, where a little two-year-old boy had lost his life." And he says, "I would just want you to see um, the wonderful men that keep you safe at night and protect all." of the families in Spanish Fork and surrounding areas. We're so lucky that we have such a great relationship with all of our neighbors that, uh, that our, our public safety first responders. Richard taught me something that night and it was something that I will never forget. And on behalf of the mayor and the council, we love you and we thank you for your service. Now I turn the time over to Kevin Blaylock from Blaylock Partners, architects, and then Chief Steve Adams, will uh, address us and then Mayor Steve Lafson and we'll do the groundbreaking ceremony after that. Thank you. I didn't realize I was going first. But, um, <laughs> how I'm doing this and Nick isn't, but it is what it is. Um, on behalf of Blaylock and Partners, thank you for inviting me to say a few, few words. We were honored to have been entrusted with the design of this important facility. Um, we look forward to its realization over the next 12 months. This project has been a collaborative effort between city staff, public safety personnel, the design team, and the construction partner, Westland Construction. Fire Station 62 has been designed as a state-of-the-art emergency response facility to address Spanish Forks City's growing needs. The committee has placed uh, functional efficiencies, firefighter, firefighter wellness, and creative, creating cost-effective solutions at the forefront of their decision-making. From the design team's perspective, we view fire stations as more than just buildings for fire trucks and, and emergency equipment. These critical facilities are for and about people, ensuring the safety and well-being of those that need assistance 
as well as housing the brave individuals that commit to providing that assistant, assistance in times of emergency. Therefore, we believe wholeheartedly that fire stations should be a source of community pride, a beacon and a symbol of strength to the residents, and a civic icon upholding the values and ideals that the, of the city it serves. At approximately 14,500 square feet, the facility provides bunk rooms for seven emergency personnel, three pull-through apparatus bays, exercise and wellness space, training and education space, as well as workspace for uh, an office dedicated for police personnel. Uh, lastly, this is an amazing site. Uh, the building sits at the gateway to the city from the east and an important intersection of both place and time. Conceptually, we drew inspiration from the city's agricultural heritage that used to occupy this part of Spanish Fork. We envisioned the facility as a series of farm-inspired structures. Three primary functional components became expressed as outbuildings. Somebody's got to go. <laughs> those, those three outbuildings, the, the apparatus barn, starting, starting from the east, the apparatus barn, will have the, the largest presence on the site um, with phenomenal views to the mountains. The firefighter farmhouse, as, as we coined it, is the kitchen, dining, and social hub of the station and the entry silo on the north corner, or sorry, the south corner, um, is the iconic civic element anchoring the corner of the site and announcing the, uh, the entry to the building. Again, thank you on behalf of Blaylock and Partners for this opportunity, and we're really looking forward to being part of this over the next 12 months. Thank you. Welcome everyone, I'm grateful for the opportunity to take just a, a few minutes and, and share some of my thoughts. Uh, this station is gonna be called Station 62. Uh, it'll be occupied by both our volunteer firefighters as well our, as our ambulance crews. You might wonder why six and two or 62? Years ago, some years ago, uh, the uh, government entities in Utah County designated each of the cities by population and gave them a number. We were, some years ago, we were sixth in population in Utah County, and that's where you get the number six from. So all of our police agents, our police cars, as well as uh, our fire stations and, and such, have the designated number of six before it. So, for example, this will be Station 62. The one down on Main Street is Station 61, being the, 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 one earlier to this one. So let me, let me go through a, a little bit of history of our fire department and then I'll go through a little bit of history of our, our EMS department, our e EMTs. Our firefighters were first organized in 1908, 111 years ago. Uh, at that time, they were organized uh, by four individuals from each ward and four at large which added up to about 20, 20 firefighters. They bought the first firefighter, firefighting apparatus for $9,000. That's amazing considering that uh, today in this building we'll be uh, putting equipment in there that'll be over a million dollars. In the early years our firefighters were notified about a fire by a bell that was rung continuously down in the Main Street area. After that bell, uh, they went to an electric siren that would wail up and down until uh, the time limit was made and our firefighters would respond. Uh, to test that signal, every, uh, at 12 o'clock each day, that would go off. And I remember as a child working on the east side of, on my grandpa's farm, that going off knowing that that was time for lunch. I was mentioning that to the mayor before and he says, yeah, that was the signal for, for me to eat, and I started getting hungry when I heard that siren go off. And then, this is timely, then we went to pagers. Uh, and that, uh, that took place in 1976. Our firefighters uh, started wearing those pagers, and then also the siren going off uh, from, for a short time, and then now we re rely totally upon our, our paging system. Now there's two firefighters here that are currently active, That'd be Deputy Chief Pruitt and, and Chief Jarvis. 
that responded to the station both uh, before pagers as well as during the siren time. Uh, they've got, uh, Chief Jarvis has over 40 years of service, volunteer service I might add, which is uh, something that's very significant and, and uh, honorable for, for both of these men to, to serve as long as they have in the capacities that they have. In 1996, uh, well, let me back up. In 1934, we uh, had our first opportunity to, to find the funds and the location to build our first building. That was located on the southwest corner of Main Street next to the, the police station at the time. That building, if you, you remember it, I remember going in it, it uh, cost the city uh, $20,000 to build. The next building that they went to, they vacated that in 1996 and went to the building that they're currently in, Station 61 on Main Street. And that building has been uh, sufficient for our needs until, uh, until now when we, we feel like we, we need this station, Station 62. So 1934, $20,000, 1962, nearly $6 million to build this building today. Uh, one of the great things that I have is respect for for our firefighters, 111 years they've been in service of our community in a volunteer capacity. And one thing that I, I'd be remiss if I didn't to speak about today is that over that 111 years, there was one firefighter that has lost his life in service. That being of uh, Ross Forsyth Beck. Firefighter Beck and another firefighter were traveling to the scene of a, of a, a incident. And on that travel, they got into a collision and firefighter Beck lost his life. And so at this time, I'd like to have, out of respect for him and his service to the community and his family's sacrifice and the sacrifice for our community, I'd like to have a moment of silence for him and his family. Thank you. Let me move on to our ambulance department. They were first organized in 1974. And to be able to cover all of the shifts, we needed several individuals because they not only needed to do this shift, but they also needed to uh, and continue to need to do uh, their full-time jobs. So there was 30 people, men and women, that were uh, asked and volunteered at the time to be on our, our ambulance crews. And we, we have nearly that many today, about 30 individuals that donate their time uh, and sacrifice their time to, to serve our citizens. That first ambulance that they bought was $20,000. We are putting out to bid here shortly a new ambulance, a replacement ambulance, and then a, a, thereafter we'll get a second ambulance to come up here. And those ambulances are running nearly $200,000. Times have changed, haven't they? We're spending a lot more money. During the first few years of, of their service, uh, our ambulance re would respond to about one call per day. Today, in a 24-hour period, they respond to about six calls per day. Our ambulance also moved over to that new station, Station 61, in, in 1996, and, and uh, occupied a, a portion of that building there. Now, over here uh, to my right, your left, there are two maps that d depict response time from our, our our uh, different stations. Station 61 and is, is uh, there and it has a response time of three minutes from that station. Then the other map shows both station 61 and 62 and the response time in three minutes from both stations. Now why that's significant and why that's important is you, you may already know. Uh, a, a fire will double every minute depending on what is on fire. And so it's important to get individuals from, from, the, from the fire truck station to, to the scene to protect our, our property. The other thing that's important is our EMS personnel need to, to get to see the scenes fast as well. They have, a, the reason that three minutes is important because our brains have the capacity, they call it emergency supply of oxygen to function correctly. If that's longer than three minutes, uh, we have brain damage and some memory loss. So it's two things are important. One, that each of us, each of you, know and learn CPR and then activate CPR when it's needed. And then secondly, for us as a city to put a station in an area that will help us to respond more quickly to the areas that, that might be in need, saving, again, as I said, life and property.
you know, we're, we are so, let me, let me go over one more thing that's, in, that's important that, that I think that you, you all, all are aware of, and that being of uh, the Intermountain Hospital coming, coming to town. Uh, they are hoping to open the hospital in the fall of 2020. We likewise are hoping to have this opened in the fall of 2020 to, to help support that, that hospital. Uh, currently, our ambulance personnel uh, go on that six calls per day, 24-hour period, and we have EMTs at the station down on, on Main Street from 7 o'clock in the morning until midnight. Uh, they're there uh, waiting for, for the calls, and that captures about 90% of all the calls that come into the city. And when the hospital opens, we have been told and we sh that we should expect an additional three to six calls per day for a 24-hour period. And so that will likely cause us to have a need for a, a second uh, staffing of, of an ambulance during those heavy call times. That's what this building will help us do, accommodate a second staffing of individuals, perhaps some sleeping quarters if we need to go through the night and be able to serve both the, the community as well as the hospital that's coming to town. You know, we are, we are so grateful uh, to you as citizens. We had, uh, some time ago, we had a little community meeting up here when the, I'm gonna call it the small mart, uh, was put in. Uh, and we asked some of the citizens that were in that conversation how they would feel if we had uh, a fire station across the street and over here. We were thinking about it at that time. Every one of them mentioned that they would welcome a fire station in their, in their community and in their neighborhood, which we're grateful for. I've not had any, anyone that uh, has not been grateful for, uh, as a citizen as, uh, for the fire station coming uh, into true fruition here. And so for that, we're very, very thankful. Very thankful for our mayor and Mayor Lason, the council members, Scoobs, Mendenhall, Argyle, Beck, and Gordon, as well as uh, our city manager, Seth Perrins. Without this cooperative e effort from the citizens and our council and the city management, this wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen as timely as it, uh, that it's happening. And we are, uh, the town has, has been coined a, a town of pride and progress, and this is certainly that. Uh, our hope is that we as a public safety department can continue to strive to serve and protect and save lives and property. Uh, again, I'd like to, to thank each one of you for taking some time out of your day uh, to come here and to, to share this uh, ribbon cutting with us. We feel it's uh, uh, going to be a, a great asset to the city, excited for it to happen, uh, and we again hope to continue to to help the community in, in the capacities that we do in saving lives and property. Thank you. Now he does a good job. That's why he's Brandon's hero. And maybe because Brandon spends a lot of time in the cop car with him, you know, getting picked up all the time. That might help too. But uh, hey, we like to welcome you all to this. This is a great event um, happening today. It's been a long time coming and uh, we are very excited for it. We're excited to be able to provide for our citizens here uh, another opportunity to serve them better. You know, we have probably some of the best volunteer firefighters and ambulance people in the state, if not the world, the United States here, and I I'm mean that because as I go around, uh, just today I was talking to a uh, former mayor and he says, do you guys still have volunteer firefighters there? And I said, yes, we do. He said, that's amazing for the city of your size that you still have volunteer firefighters. And I said, that's because we have the best. And they really love to serve our community and, and we're excited for them. So what I'd like to do, if you're not, if you're already standing, if all the firefighters and all the ambulance crew, will you please stand? And if you're standing, raise your hand. Come on, don't be shy, everybody. Let's give them a hand. I'll tell you what. You guys don't realize how much money these guys, these people save the city. It's millions of dollars because it's not it's expensive to have full-time firefighters. And so they do a service and to help us uh, save a lot of money. And so we're excited to be able to give them the equipment and facilities so they can uh, 
do their job to the best of their abilities and help us all out here. You know, I remember uh, the old fire station down there on Main Street, Fort North, um, right next to Rockies. Um, that used to be the police station. And uh, my dad was a city judge and he held court there every Wednesday night. And sometimes I'd sneak down and see him. And of course, what I really like to do is I like to sneak over to the fire station and, and look at the trucks there. And then I remember when it moved across the street, that used to be the National Guard Armory where it sits now. And we spent a lot of time there at the armory playing basketball and having uh, sock hops and all that stuff. So it's kind of interesting to see how everything evolves here in this town. Um, the other thing I would like to do is these uh, firefighters and ambulance people, uh, I will be forever indebted to them. My younger brother, Red Leifson, was a firefighter, and when he passed away, uh, the outgoing love that those guys showed our family and, uh, and for the service that he made, I'll uh, forever be indebted to you. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, brotherhood and sisterhood of the ambulance and the firefighters. So we are so grateful for each one of you and for all you do. And, uh, we're excited to have this in our community, and we're grateful for the support that each of you have given us, and uh, we're grateful for the contractors and the architects, because we know you won't screw this up, because we'll be watching you. And so uh, let's uh, join with them and get this building going, and thank you for all coming. Thank you, Mayor. Not all of us had a father as a judge, so didn't spend as much time in the police cars, did you? Hmm, how convenient. One more thing that was mentioned, uh, not mentioned, was when, at Dave Euler's retirement ceremony, his wife mentioned that that's how they got their family in the rodeo, was by filling all of the, sending all the kids into the ambulance as they drove past the gate. And so she was, she was safe at, uh, since we're telling all of our childhood secrets, like Mayor said. Uh, sneaking in to the trucks and that so uh, again thanks to all of our speakers we'll now go to our groundbreaking ceremony um, we'll have three three or four separate little uh, shovel things and hopefully not get burnt mayor Steve Lafson and the city council members um, uh, and then with along with chief uh, Brent Jarvis and uh, uh, Deputy Chief Pruitt and Ryan Baum, and uh, and then we'll also have our firefighters and EMS staff as well to break ground after the initial one, um, and then if uh, Westland and Blaylock and partners or those guys want to put on a hard hat and do the same, so we'll proceed to that part now. Down to three, one, two, three.